In this video, we'll be talking about amniocentesis. It's a diagnostic process which help us to uh, determine genetic and develop neurodevelopmental disorders. So before understanding amniocentesis, we have to understand amniotic fluid. It's a fluid that surrounds and protects the baby during the pregnancy inside the mother's womb. So amniocentesis is a procedure to collect that amniotic fluid and the cells or metabolites which are associated with that amniotic fluid and look for specific biomarkers specific to a disease. That's the purpose of amniocentesis. Question is, when it is performed? It is recommended within the gestational week 14 to 16. But uh, with strong recommendation, there could be the other timelines as well. So amniocentesis uh, takes place with the help of a needle which pokes through the abdomen till the amniotic cavity and it is guided through a ultrasonography. A medical individual can look through the ultrasound and poke the needle in a proper place which doesn't harm the embryo but can collect some amount of fluid and the metabolites associated with it. So what is inside that amniotic fluid? So there could be metabolic byproducts of the fetus. So several metabolites are secreted or leaked out into the amniotic fluid while the fetus is developing inside that cage. Second, there could be cells known as amniocytes which could be shred shedded into that amniotic fluid possibly during the development of lungs. So all these are important biomarkers for several diseases. Like what? So high level of alpha fetoprotein is a kind of uh, biomarker or indicative of neural tube defects like anencephaly or spina bifida. Now, not only about these neural tube defects, genetic defects can also be screened using amniocentesis. For example, if a doctor suspects that a baby has, uh, uh, from the USG report of a baby, there is a chance of Down syndrome, he or she would basically uh, suggest a confirmatory amniocentesis and karyotyping. So the amniocytes are taken, cultured, and from that, the karyotype is performed. Karyotype is basically looking at the chromosomal profile. And in this case, trisomy 21 can be observed from the karyotype. Similarly, other genetic syndromes like uh, Edward syndrome, for example, can also be looked at or screened using these amniocentesis process followed by karyotyping. So it's an extremely important and essential uh, medical procedure. Question is, when does a doctor prescribe the amniocentesis? There are some pre-criteria for this amniocentesis to be prescribed. It's not a very easy technique and not a very uh, low-cost technique to be done all the time. So the prerequisite for this is the abnormal maternal serum profile for sudden screening biomarkers for, let's say, some, some sort of biomarkers for Down syndrome. Or it is sometimes prescribed when condition number one and also the mother's age is more than 35 years. So abnormal fetal ultrasound can also be a, a key driver of prescribing this particular test. If a particular person or a parent has previous child with a chromosomal abnormality, there are child in the family which has chromosomal abnormality. So in that case, it is recommended. So amniocentesis is one of the way by which one can screen what happens in the fetal window. But alongside that, there are other methods known as chorionic Wilde sampling, where a small part of the chorion, uh, basically uh, during the placental development, is taken out. And the cells from both these situations are cultured and karyotyping can be performed to understand what goes wrong at the chromosomal level. So karyotyping can be performed by both these techniques and both are very important for diagnostic disease, especially fetal developmental disorders. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.